dog with a dog, dude with a dog, and a dog with a dude. How to handle hot dogs? By hot dogs, I mean, of course, dogs that were triggered to be aggressive. Now, last week in the Bronx, there was an incident where a woman unleashed two pit bulls on a man to attack him. Bystanders helped to break up the fight and save the man's life. However, lasting seven minutes, I want to give some advice on how to more quickly gain control and uh, break up situations like that. Now, watching the video was very difficult for me because one thing I kept looking at is, are they going to get to his neck? Our own Achilles heel as humans is, of course, the neck. There's a vein, and if that gets ruptured, you can bleed out quite quickly. Every creature has an Achilles heel, so we need to protect our Achilles heel. The guy uh, was flailing his arms and that saved him because the dogs didn't really have a point to latch on to and lock. The way people tried to break up this dog fight is one guy sprayed water on them. That temporarily will surprise a dog and get him to, to move for a second, but it won't give you the control over the dog that you need to stop him from coming back. Another guy swung a chain. That doesn't really help much either because especially pit bulls are bred to have a much higher threshold for pain. And again, even if it temporarily makes the dog yank away, it'll have him come back. The first thing you want to do is try to grab on to the collar or harness. Looking at the picture in the video, it seemed like these dogs didn't have a collar or harness. I'm going to talk about that responsibility of that dog owner in a second. Another option would be to put a blanket or t-shirt over the eyes. Just like we do with alligators or crocodiles, it will basically calm them down and it will disrupt the eyesight to whatever they're attacking. Now, not everybody carries a blanket, of course. I know what you're thinking. You know, Charlie Brown or whoever that character is in the Peanuts. Understood. Another option is, of course, to have a lasso or some kind of uh, uh, rope with, with, a, with a noose around it. And I know what you're thinking now as well. Not since the days of the Wild West have you been in the habit of carrying a lasso around. Also understood. So there wasn't an option here either. All those primary options failing, you need to really then go at the Achilles heel of the animal attacking you. And this is, by the way, true for any animal, wild animals, even sharks. You can basically get out of almost any situation if you stay calm and know what you're doing in regards to getting at the Achilles heel of an animal or getting at the most sensitive part. And in the case of dogs, wolves, even bears, the snout is very sensitive, so punching the snout will definitely cause a reaction. And then the other part is the throat. Just like our Achilles heel is the throat, it's also in animals like those, like dogs, wolves, and so forth. So many people would advise against grabbing the throat and squeezing, but in a situation like that, I would do that. And I have a friend who has small dogs who were attacked before more than once, and that's what she did. She, she squeezed really hard on the big dog's throat and the dog let go. One time she punched the snout. One time she even stuck her hand in the mouth, which I don't, absolutely don't recommend. But the dog didn't bite. The dog just spit out the hand like that and then went away. So those options, even though they don't give you control yet over the dog, they can help break off the, uh, uh, the aggression and make, make, the, make the animal understand that you are fighting back and that you know what you're doing. If your life depends on it, that's what you have to do. Now, in the situation of the Bronx incident, you had two dogs. That makes the situation, of course, much, much more difficult because you need more than one person to gain control over two dogs. The way that I would do it is to grab the hind legs of the dog and then pull him away that way and you will have control over him. An average man can hold up a dog like that. These dogs, pit bulls, are about 45 to 60 pounds. So one can hold them up. But again, you need two people if you have two dogs. So this was a very, very difficult situation. And uh, it was a case of bad, irresponsible ownership. 
This incident, of course, put pit bulls back in their headlines because those two dogs happen to be pit bulls. They could have just as well been Akitas, Rottweilers, Shepherds, and many other strong, medium-sized and large-sized dogs. But they happen to be pit bulls, so pit bulls are again in the headlines. Now, I have a pit bull, so I have a stake in, in their reputation, and I want to talk about their nature a little bit. Pit bulls are actually people-friendly and they tend to be animal aggressive. Dogs are generally one or the other, not both. Especially single owner dogs get very protective. But pit bulls generally are very, very people friendly. They used to even be referred to as nanny dogs not too long ago in the United States. To get them to be people aggressive, they need to be specifically trained as guard and attack dogs. So in the case of this woman, who in the newspaper they said those dogs had also already killed three dogs this summer, and yet the police didn't do anything about it. The police in New York City, by the way, does not intervene in dog against dog violence, but that's a different topic. So these dogs already showed a lot of aggression, and apparently they were trained to be guard dogs and attack people when given the command. And so the woman unleashed them and apparently gave the command to attack this guy. Not only did she unleash them, she must have taken the collar off. So I didn't see any collars in these pictures. So that's incredibly irresponsible. It's like having a gun, the animal, and you load the gun, you train it, and then you pull the trigger. You trigger it with a command. So of course the woman deserves to be in, uh, in custody. Some people believe in passports for dogs. In some countries, pit bulls actually have to have a passport. They have to go through certain tests, show that the dogs are trained properly and that they can handle them and that they respond to commands. Now, I believe that's not a bad idea. However, I think it's discrimination to do it to pit bulls only because there's many more people aggressive breeds. It should really be done to all medium to large dogs like shepherds, rottweilers as well and so forth. I don't think that's a bad idea to prove that you can handle them, that you understand the psychology of these animals and that you um, have trained them to obey to your commands. Now, the most aggressive dog breeds, not the most dangerous, but the most aggressive dog breeds, in many lists that you'll find online, you'll be shocked to hear that number one is a Dachshund. Second place is also gonna shock you, Chihuahuas. And then third place is also a small dog, a terrier. I forgot, the I forgot which particular terrier. So those are very aggressive dogs. And then you have dogs that are perhaps less aggressive but dangerous because their bite is so strong. And they also get more reported when they get aggressive because when a Chihuahua bites, many of those incidences don't get reported to the police or in a hospital. So the statistics are also skewed in that sense. Pit bulls have the highest percentage of dogs in the uh, American dog population, according to Esquire magazine. So that, of course, also skews the uh, um, statistics a little bit to, in the sense that most incidences are likely to happen with a dog that has the highest population. Until next time, I hope you got something out of it. Please comment below if you have additional advice on how to break up dog fights or any additional comments. I'm very curious about it. Stay safe. Help those in need and take care. Just truly. All right, buddy, what's going on?